Thanos is coming. This might be dangerous, so let's put on our mean faces. We're gonna need some help. All right, kid, you're an Avenger now. Ready? The entire time I knew Thanos, he only ever had one goal. To wipe out half the universe. We are out of time. The end is near. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. I just love that Spider-Man tag in there. All right, kid, you're an Avenger. Spider-Man knighted officially by Sir Iron Man as part of the Avengers Knights of the Round Table. I suppose Benedict Cumberbatch would probably be the one to actually do that. He's really the only British one in that gang, but I suppose that Iron Man is the real king of the Avengers if you're going to split hairs. But there's just a whole bunch of new footage in both of these. I think this was dropped during the Halo World Championships. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. This is just the beginning. There's going to be a whole bunch of Deadpool. There's an Infinity Gauntlet giveaway that's going on. The screenwriters even revealed a whole bunch of deleted Captain Marvel scenes that will make it into Avengers 4. So I think that also kind of confirms our Captain Marvel post credits tag in some fashion. So I'll talk about that after I talk about the new footage. And there's also a lot of questions about other WonderCon trailers too. So there's just a lot of stuff happening this weekend. We finally get some dialogue from Mark Ruffalo as Banner, Thanos is coming. So that's obviously right after they find him crashing through the Sanctum. If you guys didn't read the comic book Infinity Gauntlet classic story, what happens is, is Silver Surfer basically gets his ass kicked across the galaxy by Thanos. He crashes through the Sanctum and issues this warning. So Doctor Strange is really like the first Avenger on Earth that finds out what's going on. But because this is going to be like a two and a half hour movie, I think it's a little over two and a half hours, like two hours, 36 minutes or something like that. They've condensed a lot of that story. So when he crashes through the sanctum, Iron Man has already been there talking to Doctor Strange about this grand cosmic threat that's coming. So it just so happens that Iron Man's sitting there when old buddy Bruce Banner just crashes right through. We get some new Guardians footage. This might be dangerous. Let's put on our mean faces. Then you see Banner turn into the Hulk. And it actually, if you look at the background here, this actually looks like it's still back on that Asgardian ship. So I know there's a lot of questions about what goes on with the Hulk in this. Because as of the end of Thor Ragnarok, he had been the Hulk. The whole thing about him going back to being Banner after being the champion of Sakaar is that he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to turn back into Banner after becoming the Hulk. He's like, if I turn into him again, it's going to be permanent. I just told you, if I turn into the Hulk, I am never going to come back again. And you don't care. So when we saw him during the Infinity War trailers, he was mostly Banner to that last big invasion of Wakanda. Like you see him talking to Shuri here. So there's a lot of Avengers that have problems going on with their headspace or just really weird stuff that only Shuri is probably going to be able to fix. So maybe if she can help them with their Vision Infinity Stone problem, like the Mind Stone inside Vision's head, maybe she can also help Banner a little bit too. If you can deprogram the Winter Soldier's mind, you could probably find some way to help out Bruce Banner with his two different psyches, with the Hulk personality, with the Banner personality. But remember, it's not going to be a five-hour movie, so I don't know how much of that they're going to get into this. And I'm not expecting it to be too crazy. Because you see that big invasion scene at the end of the trailer and you see the Hulkbuster 2.0. And I think by now we're all thinking that, yeah, that's Banner inside of there. The Outriders overrun it and that's probably when he turns back into the Hulk. So that's probably happening towards the end of the film. So I'm expecting mostly Banner during this. But it's fascinating to think that if he starts out as the Hulk on the Asgardian ship when Thanos shows up to take the Tesseract and get the Space Stone out of it, then what happens to make him turn back into Banner? Like, does he get his ass kicked so hard by Thanos that he just reverts right back to Banner? Because a lot of the actors, the directors, have actually talked about the relationship between Thanos and the Hulk, and it's fascinating because it's not something that we've thought a lot about before. Hulk is probably going to fight Cole Obsidian at some point because they're like the two biggest members of each person's Avengers-style team. They said Hulk is impressed by Thanos' strength because he's so powerful. And Thanos is interested in the Hulk. Like, he's like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. He's even a little surprised by how powerful Captain America is when he holds back his gauntlet briefly here. 
But I think I think we've clarified this scene here isn't so much Thanos trying to punch Captain America and Captain America stopping him. It's really Thanos coming for vision. And we do get that other scene that sort of pairs from later in that moment where he says time has run out. So vision's getting ready to get his ass kicked, too. And Captain America is the only thing between them. So Captain America is like the linebacker that tries to get in Thanos' way. So he's really just reaching for Captain America's head so that he can grab him and just throw him out of the way and get to the mind gem. But the really cool thing about this scene with Vision, because obviously we think that Thanos is going to get the stone because he's going to assemble the Infinity Gauntlet, so at some point it's going to have to happen, is they said that they shot it like an actual horror film. So obviously this is a big action film. It's more of a heist 70s style film because Thanos is going around taking all the gems. It's his heist film. But for a couple different scenes, they sort of flip genres. So if they haven't really done a Marvel horror film before, I don't consider Blade a horror film, even though vampire films are kind of like a horror subgenre. I don't think that Marvel has done a straight up horror film before. They said that this scene will be kind of like that. Playing out like a monster film like Jaws or something like that. Like you have a bunch of people on the boat, you know where the monster is, and eventually it will reach them. So there's this terror that you feel as you're just waiting for it to happen because you know at some point the monster's going to show up and just wreck everything. In the comics, Vision did not have the Mind Stone. He just had a Sunstone that powered all of his systems. Thanos pretty much just rips him right apart. But a lot of people forget that Vision can self-repair. So you just like put him in a little pile by himself and he'll put himself back together slowly. You get a little bit more of this lead up to that Wakandan battle. Like they land right outside the shield. And I love this shot of them destroying the forest because their army is so big and so strong. Like it's literally like a bunch of bulldozers running towards the shield. A little bit more of Doctor Strange being tortured by what I'm assuming is Ebony Maw. Like, we don't get an actual shot of his face. Like, they're two completely different shots in that last big trailer. But you see him whisper just a little bit. So if you're going to send somebody to fight Doctor Strange, you're going to send another magic user. That's Ebony Maw. It's kind of hard to tell where this ship is, but it could be the same ship where Spider-Man gets knighted as an Avenger by Iron Man but no idea on what the timeline is here. I'm assuming this just happens much, much later, and it's them interrogating Doctor Strange for the location of the Mind Gem. Where's the other stone? Give it to us. The end is near, and I love the way that they end on Captain America screaming silently with that singing voiceover. Like, there's this ah song going. It's almost like everybody's screaming as Captain America looks like he's going to meet his maker. The thing about this, though, you have to remember that there are a bunch of big twists in the movie so everybody let me know in the comments do you actually think that this is Captain America's last stand or if you do think that he's going to die during the next two films how do you think that it's going to happen but there's just a whole bunch of new stuff in this so let me know what's your favorite moment from this new footage probably have to be Spider-Man being knighted as an Avenger because he's sort of like the fanboy that gets to go on this trip like his oh my god face as they're preparing for battle in that other trailer like I can't believe this is happening I'm so happy to be here but talking about the Captain Marvel deleted scenes that the writers were talking about, they said originally they wanted Captain Marvel to be a much bigger part of Infinity War, but because she was so like Captain America in her personality, they decided to just hold off and let her debut during her solo movie and then be a much bigger thing during Avengers 4. But it does sort of sync up with the idea that the director said that Captain Marvel is not really in Avengers Infinity War, which is why I'm saying post credit scene, like, okay, they might tag her at the end of the film. Then when they say she'll debut during her movie, that's when you'll really see her scenes. You get the origin story, the big explainer, so that when she gets to Avengers 4, you'll already understand everything that's going on with her. So they don't need to spend a whole lot of Avengers 4 explaining her backstory, what her powers are, what she can do. I do wonder what her original plot was going to be during Infinity War. Like, how are they going to use her if she was going to be a much bigger character? What will happen is, is later tonight, the Dragon Ball finale is going to air. Series finale, last episode ever of Dragon Ball Super. So I'll do a video for that. Funny story, Captain Marvel also has a Super Saiyan mode. It's called Binary. But the visual effect kind of looks the same thing as when Goku goes Super Saiyan. So while you wait for that, click here to rewatch the new Deadpool trailer and click here for more new Infinity War. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.